Van life was a strange phenomenon. Do you not have any fulfillment in your job? Is this city that smells like urine getting you down? Do you happen to have over 50 grand in liquid capital? Then van life is for you. It basically took a group of vulnerable people who were then preyed upon with the promise of a fulfilling life on the road. All the promises were there. Life of freedom, not tied down to anywhere, possibly second base potential. However, much like a dead shark, you will be surprised once you pry back that shiny wrapper to reveal a license plate of shame inside. Especially during the era of, shall we say, <clears throat> our forced stay in place order, this led to a significant number of different blog posts encouraging people to become a wandering vagrants reliant upon the kindness of the asphalt. I myself looked upon it fondly but also a layer of logic laid over this lame-brained, lamb-brast-worthy idea. I have trouble using toilets near anyone, even in a stall. How would me trolling down the road and the need strikes me go? So I curtailed myself to simply remaining where I was and letting my life roll on. Little did I know that a significant number of people were going to be posting a few years later about the negative side effects of a decision to live in a vehicle the average size of walk-in closet with two cats, two dogs, and a significant other to quote-unquote share the experience with. My best friend and I can talk for hours about literally nothing or not speak at all. We have been in cars together for hours on end, even days on end, and nothing ever came of it. Living with them in a van for the entirety of the time would end one way. One of us would have a felony charge, and the other of us would be buried somewhere in the mountains of the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to let you guess which one of us would be behind bars. Let's examine this logically, even from the point of view of vehicle cost. Most vehicles you purchase are overpriced at that, and then the value is halved when you roll on the tires for the first time. But it's my home. No, to the average peruser, it's a Ford and an E-Series at that. I have enough bad jokes at my expense of my appearance. Throwing a panel van into that? is for sure going to end with way too many I live in this neighborhood conversations with the boys in blue. Let's say the van purchase cost for a new van is starting at $36,000. So we go used. One that works, let's say, cuts down to about 20000 Feel bad yet? You're getting a finance lesson from a literary potato. Now, let's say you are really handy or have the time frame to both learn and assemble a livable van from scratch. Let's get laminate flooring. So that's $1 a square foot. So let's round up to about $100 at the low end. Next, building the cabinetry. On average, a kitchen is between $6,000 and $12,000 counting labor. So let's round that down to $2,000, just four parts. Call me a NASCAR driver because we keep rounding. And again, low end. So we are about $22,100 towards a van. That does not count time spent, supplies, other supplies purchased, and finding facilities to use. So that was a long march to an anticlimactic ending. You're going to end up spending about the same amount as a down payment on a small home in the Midwest. At least in 2020. Everyone remember 2008? I would say Recession Part 2 Electric Boogaloo, but this is more akin to the squeakle. That is just the finance side very, very briefly, not counting where you're going to shower, where you're going to park it, how you're going to fill it up, where exactly you're going to go, all on top of trying to figure out whether or not your work is going to allow you to do so so that you can continue to pay that monstrous bill that you paid for this monstrous vehicle. And I mean briefly, I am too much of an English major to do that much math. So let's approach this like a lover with some vigor. I'm a shut-in. Being around people exhausts me, and being on the phone for longer than three minutes will make me actually collapse. I'm not agoraphobic, but outside is scary, and I might accidentally get hit on the head with a coconut. However, I still need to know where everything is around me, and then I have friends there to fall back on if need be. Let's take that those details, and then add the extra factor that my entire existence is shoved into an eight-foot-long van. You shower at a gym, you have to move frequently or pay parking fees, and the only people you see are the friends that happen to be in the city that you are in at any given point. Pardon me while I go puke, because even talking about that vagrant of a lifestyle makes my stomach churn. I am not casting judgment over certain people who decided to pursue this particular life path. What I am saying is that from a personal point of view, it doesn't surprise me that this, like many fads, has gone in the way of Beanie Babies. It was a lot of fun at first, but then all of a sudden you just wasted a significant portion of your savings to get something that you're never going to use again. In the same vein as many fans before it, the regret sinks in. You had gotten drunk on the idea of freedom and woke up from your stupor next to the realization called reality. Now, I won't bring up the person by name, but let's just say you can go into Google and then type in van life regrets and select one of the first ones because I can't be bothered to dig deeper 
and as such, we select this one. It is entitled, I failed at van life. Here are the 11 biggest mistakes I made. The use of an odd number to stand out, I appreciate breaking the norm. The author did state that she was entranced with the idea from the jump by both going on a road trip and by the YouTube videos that were bombarding their timelines because the algorithm was determined to make you a van life proponent. It was amazing, almost hypnotic in its own way. How dare you purchase land in a house? Be reliant on this piece of machinery that can break at any moment and anywhere. Don't you want to meet the guys who hang out at rest stops at one o'clock in the morning and try to do unspeakable things in broad daylight? She takes her time to point out a lot of the obvious things, as in choosing the wrong vehicle, no new stream of income, and not prep for the hot and cold weather. I will admit that I actually did not think of this until I read it. I can't even imagine being stuck in Denver or in the upper mountains in the the Pacific Northwest, where I am personally from, and just being stuck in a van and not having, not being able to turn it on. Holy mother of frostbite. Looking at the navigator on your phone, curse your inevitable betrayal. One bullet that she takes her time to point out is uh, cleanliness. So she stated here that she was willing to give up daily showers, but she wasn't actually prepared to give up her other hobbies such as art. Diving into this, I love gaming, but I haven't given up a shower for it since college, and that was for ranked League of Legends matches. Why I gave up my own personal hygiene to be called a bitch on the internet by 14 year olds is a simple answer. Addiction. This is something entirely different. You become so obsessed with your art that you're willing to give up on indoor plumbing to pursue a dream that was sold to you under false pretenses. Additionally, it was 2020. All of us just wanted to be outside. Even those of us who were scared of outside wanted to be outside. So much so that several parties just decided to live outside. We're progressing in technology and yet going backward to be drawn to a more simpler life made easier by said technology. If the Amish were more like people, we'd be all be turning butter on their plantations. Wow, that's a new book idea. The final argument against, or the final thing that she brings attention to is the loneliness. This is a tad more of a serious issue that not a lot of people think about. I myself have gotten very, very good at being alone. And that was from a significant portion of years before my marriage, where the only time I ever spent with other people was with a very select group of friends. And by a group of friends, I literally mean two people. You know who you are. So being alone on the road 24-7 and not having friends in the city that you're in, only being connected through a phone. This is something that developed because of what ended up happening during the year of our Lord 2020. We all assume that human connection can be achieved through a screen, and it can't. I know for a fact that you can't. This may seem like a wondrous dream and that it might provide you with a semblance of freedom, but with it, it also comes with a prison of its own. Now, to the author, I'm not judging you by any means. You you were told something you and you developed a dream from it and you pursued it. That is so much better than, let's say, 90% of the American population. We look at a dream and said, huh, that's a dream. And then we continue to type up our report for a manager that's going to take the credit for it anyway. So more power to you. You also had the wherewithal to admit that you failed and that you did something that not a lot of people would do and how you failed at it required a courage that I don't I don't possess I can barely call to order a pizza let alone live in a van for however long that you did more power to you this is also directed at the people who are trying to convince others to join this way of life unless you guys wanted to start a little van commune and then have little raiding parties that go from city to city to city and find different parking spaces in front of people's houses that you get chased out by dogs and weapons stop it Stop encouraging people. If someone wants to pursue this lifestyle, let them come to that realization on their own. Stop trying to convince people that this is a good idea. You can show them the highlights, but you never show them the lowlights. Get over yourselves. This is not that special of an idea. If you've made it this far, let me know your thoughts about van life down in the comments below. If you've actually done it, I would actually really love to hear from you and have a long, longer form conversation with you about the highlights, the lowlights, and actually some level of realism surrounding it. Because there doesn't just it doesn't seem to be a lot of it. Because even even now, when all, more articles are coming out about the failure in van life, it's a little harder to find than actual, oh, this is why I tried in van life, and this is why van life is great. Point out some of the bad. You need to point out some of the bad. So leave some, leave a comment down below. Let me know. I would love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this and you thought it was funny, you thought it was informative, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. It is completely free. Also, along with that, hit the subscribe button. It is also completely free. I will try not to bother you with it too much. If you disagree with me, feel free to hit the dislike button and then leave a comment down below. And then you can call me an idiot. You can say that I look like an idiot. You said that this is not well researched. And I'll agree with you on all three. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. Be sure I'm not the only one who tells you that. Have yourselves a great rest of the week.